Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> we, in this day, are getting closer and closer to the Nativity fast, which is beginning in the next couple of weeks. And I need to say a few words just to remind you about the situation in which we find ourselves and the sort of things that we need to do in order to escape the wrath which surrounds us in this world and which seems to be getting only worse and worse. One of the things about spiritual life for Orthodox Christians is that they are given the power, if you like, to understand things. You may call this a sort of a prophetic gift, and indeed it is. And as there are degrees in sanctity, there are also degrees in the prophetic gifts which one receives, usually according to one's um, obedience to the commandments of our Lord. As you know, and you've probably come across saintly people who have these gifts in fullness and are able to, for example, say something about yourselves or others from the past, from the present, and of the future. But even <coughs> um, Orthodox Christians who may not have strengths to that extent, if they think carefully about the situation that surrounds them, will understand that things are not moving in the direction that is profitable to the soul. If you look at the situation in the world today, you can see that instead of things getting better and better for God's glory, it seems to be going downhill wherever we look. And even people of the world who are astute in analysing these things will tell you the same sort of situation. We heard in the epistle to the Galatians this morning about how St. Paul used to persecute Christians very vehemently and very badly at that, but in the end, through God's miracle, repented and became one of the leading apostles uh, for our Lord Jesus Christ. And this repentance is more or less the key to our own understanding of the life that we should be living. I've told you in other times how there are physical laws and there are also spiritual laws. And mostly the world ignores the latter, which is the most important, the spiritual laws which we are bound by in order that we may understand truth and walk in that truth all the days of our life. <clears throat> the example that I always give is that if you jump out of the fourth floor or something, physical laws will take over and you'll be crushed. But before physical laws come into action, there are spiritual laws, laws which are bound up with the internal life of a person, the life of the heart. And in Orthodox Christianity, which we call the interior life and bound up with that, the warfare which occurs within us whenever we come across any situation. Here is the beginnings of either the choice that we make that leads into the path of salvation or that leads into the path of unrighteousness. And what surprises me most of all is that people of the world who may not even be Christian do indeed understand these things when they ponder about them. I remember seeing a movie once where a young lady was tempted by a man and she brushed him aside. He got very upset and started to sort of criticise her. And she said to him, it's not you, it's not you, it's me. Because once I start, I don't know where to stop. And indeed, that's so. The Holy Fathers teach us about these things in the many writings that they have about spiritual life and how to live that. 
And the famous and wonderful Saint John of the Ladder gives us the spiritual laws and how one breaking of something leads to something else occurring and then to something else and something else, like a hierarchy or like a family tree. You break something and that results in a whole series of cascades into worse and worse situations. Unless, of course, you repent and cut that off. And hence, that's the whole structure of our spiritual life. That whenever we are tempted by something and we start to ponder about it, cut that off right there and then. Because the deeper you go into the thoughts and feelings about that, the more you are dragged in, and then that becomes harder and harder to free yourself from. Things like pornography especially bring this to the light, because as I've told you many times before, that part of humanity is hardwired into us, and it's not possible just to extract it and stand apart from it without um, massive struggle, but it's always possible to walk away from it. The idea of our life and spiritual life in this world is to somehow inoculate ourselves against all these terrible things that we see, so that when we have to go through this hell which surrounds us, it's somehow like um, water off a duck's back does not affect us. Although that can be very tricky because it can affect us without us knowing it. The best thing for us and for what the saints say about juniors in spiritual life is to try and avoid it in the first place. Cut it off. Don't think about it. Don't get involved with that. Don't ponder about it. Just walk away from it or free your thoughts from it. By doing this, you actually are not guilty of the fact that that thought or that feeling has come to you because that can come from outside and often does from the spiritual unrighteousness as they say that surrounds us as saint herman of Alaska said we are surrounded by legions of demons and if our eyes were open to see that what a horror that would be so these thoughts and feelings which come to us from outside rather than pondering about them, cut them off. And you know, sometimes they're very interesting and very clever, and you want to um, think about it and take them down and sort of bring them to some sort of conclusion, thinking that they might even be holy thoughts, but most of the time they are not. That is the basis of this spiritual life that we are to engender whilst we're here on earth, all towards the goal of inoculating ourselves about from this and also in preparation of the future life <coughs> where we are to be judged on whether we have successfully or not taken this warfare upon ourselves. This Sunday, as we will read later on, we commemorate dozens and dozens of saints. And every day, actually, that's a truth. Most of the names we don't know. These are the heroes that we venerate in our lives because they are living examples, even though they have made the case in life. They are living examples to us of this warfare that we need to go through. And it's important for us to realise that this warfare exists and that we are not to sort of um, put ourselves into a box thinking that it's not to be there, that we are somehow weird because we have it and we want to escape it. It's there because we live in a fallen world. It's there because the Lord has given us that so that we can understand where our souls start, um, stay and where they are going. And it's there also for us to gain crowns by rejecting that which is evil and accumulating that which is good in our bodies and souls. Through this, 
that judgment which we heard in the gospel today about Lazarus and the rich man, will God willing put us on the side of Lazarus into the bosom of Abraham, where, as it says here, no one can pass from one to the other or from the other to the one, because there is a big chasm between that. Those who have done evil cannot pass into the heavenly realm, and those who have are in the heavenly realm, do not pass into that of Hades. May God help us with these struggles and with the coming um, Nativity Lent, which is one other way in which we acquire that which makes us, as it says in Russian, prepodobny, that is, like the first created man before he fell. That's the whole idea of that Lenten period. Yes, it's there also to strengthen us in the spiritual warfare, but on the higher realm, it's to make us like the Adam before he fell, to um, purge us of that sinful nature, to purge us of that propensity to fall into temptation, to purge us away from all those evil things and to turn us to the Lord God in our life. God help us and strengthen us in this struggle, and then we, may we have understanding, because the more we do understand, the more the Lord gives, and the more we become a spiritual people. And therefore, when you fall um, in that sort of situation, do not be despondent, because chances are you have already walked some sort of righteous path, and the Lord is giving you something higher to battle with. As St. Paul also says that he is continually buffeted by all sorts of painful and <coughs> um, undesirable things in his life because he too is growing spiritually. He too is growing spiritually. And we grow spiritually. And spiritual growth comes through these difficulties. And within those difficulties, there is also joy. God help us, preserve us, and protect us in this. Amen.